detail stocks, they've been buzzing in trade uh, right now. Let's uh, get you one of the biggest voices out there. This is the management of Arvind Lifestyles on how they see festive demand shaping up, the GST transition and the impact, the outlook on growth and much more. Neha Tyagi caught up with uh, S. Kanan, the EVP and CFO at Arvind Lifestyle. This is what he had to say. In this industry, end of season sale around happens, you know, every six months. So it's just that uh, because of GST, there has been a slightly an advancement of end of season sale. Otherwise, all the excitement is with the customers, and we've been, uh, you know, uh, all the companies have been giving the offers and discounts as usual. So it's just the timing has been advanced. So to that extent, June we had a really a bonanza in terms of very good sales happening, and obviously customers having spent more, you don't expect them to spend every day. So there has been a dip in the sales of July, but I think festive season season is going to be all the more exciting with uh, you know, kind of new season launch by all the uh, brands and uh, I, we do hope to do really better in terms of the festival sale. And the outlook is quite uh, positive for this uh, festival also. So, so any expectation in terms of growth? Expectations like originally what we started off with a year uh, plan, we are expecting a double digit kind of uh, growth on the happening on the like to like uh, platform. And uh, we don't see any reason why the consumption uh, you know, upside should uh, not happen. I think slowly the consumption is started bouncing back in uh, August. So we do expect a very good uh, sale in this quarter. Uh, so Q1 was a very good uh, uh, quarter for retail. The top line grew. Uh, the like to like sales, uh, you know, uh, growth was really high. Uh, but going forward, uh, do you see the, you'll be able to sustain that kind of growth that you saw in uh, quarter one? Also, uh, beginning of July, there were some kind of, you know, uh, problems with, in terms of supply, FMCG there were supply issues in there. So do you think you will be able to maintain that momentum in the second quarter? What are your expectations? See, barring July, uh, as where the you know customers took, channel partners especially, and the consumers uh, took time to you know sort of settle down and understand the GST, more of understanding and, you know, getting to know about uh, the GST impact. I think we don't see any issues happening going forward from August. And we really do uh, hope that the initial, uh, you know, revenue projections and, uh, you know, profitability projections will be able to maintain it, barring uh, whatever uh, marginal uh, change in the kind of effective tax versus the effective, uh, you know, GST rate in, uh, you know, certain part of the apparel categories. So are you seeing any kind of uh, pressures on margins uh, and related to pricing because uh, prices for uh, apparel above, th uh, above 1,000 rupees has gone up? Uh, so what is the situation? So yes, there is a immediate, if you see the impact on uh, about 1,000 rupees, uh, the effective tax versus the GST rate, there is a pressure on the kind of margins. You know, that part of it has to be, you know, offset through a cost efficiencies which are to come in. Because it's a fact that even after considering the benefits like uh, service tax, there is a, a inflationary impact on the 12% item. Uh, but the good news is on the 5%, uh, I think we do have a sort of balancing of the tax rate versus uh, what is uh, GST rate. So I think over a, a period of uh, time, in a period of uh, year, uh, I think the prices as well as the kind of margin should uh, settle down. There could be a short-term impact on the margins. So any price hikes that you're taking? No, we have not taken any pricing. In fact, all the while uh, it's been uh, discounts which have gone off. So, as you know, in every new season, the prices get, uh, you know, sort of uh, reset. So, we have looked at the new GST rate and sort of taken the prices uh, on the same side. So, one nation, one tax, as you say, GST is, uh, everybody was talking about how it will improve efficiencies in terms of logistics, in terms of warehousing, you could see some kind of consolidation. So, what, are, what, are the, what is the kind of cost savings that you're looking at and where is it coming from? See, mainly if you look at uh, the kind of uh, biggest benefit for the industry has been the service tax, uh, you know, which will now get, be available uh, across. Second one is really the efficiencies in terms of the uh, back-end supply chain, whether it's a CST or a Octroy. Those things are really going to be, you know, uh, opened up and the transparency which is going to uh, bring in end-to-end, -end, right, from the sort of uh, manufacturing, you know, from the fabric to the end uh, garment. We are going to see a good amount of uh, improvement and uh, because of the transparency which is coming in. But I think it is going to take some time to really realize because it's not that it's going to happen uh, immediately from this because having people having the stocks of the pre-GST uh, by the time uh, they start getting the efficiencies kicked in it is going to be maybe uh, end of the year so we do see some short-term challenges uh, but I think over a period it's a good news that all those efficiencies will uh, really help in uh, at least uh, managing the prices. Uh, so any estimate um, how much cost savings you'd be doing uh, sort of expectation? Cost savings uh, as I said it's already built into the effective tax rate. For example, in a 8 to 9 percent tax rate for the industry, almost like one and a half, two percent of cost efficiency is built in. 
So for the products which are having 12%, we need to see whether any opportunity is there to get a further cost efficiencies across the you know supply chain. So just lastly, uh, about future retail, um, any expansion plans firstly, and secondly, any uh, changes to your annual targets uh, now that GST is kicked in? No, we are still holding on to the uh, you know same targets, except that you know top line, uh, the reported top line will come down because of the sort of 12% uh, rate. But otherwise, we are holding on to the estimates for the uh, sort of uh, full year. Though we had uh, sort of temporary challenges in the last uh, few months, you know, preparing for GST and the uh, channels preparing for you know these talking, and now they are going to go get into a fresh talking. That is, retail majors hoping that the festive season that falls in the second half of the fiscal should give them some leeway to offset the headwinds encountered in the first half of F518. And remember, advancing of Diwali from November to October as well this year can revitalize demand from the last fortnight of September, and this could give good momentum to retail majors. So watch out for this space. It is expected to be the focus of the markets as we get into the festive season. The Nifty 50, in the meantime, is as flat as flat can get. We're off the day's highest point, marginally in positive territory. 98.58 is what we've got, a six-point gain to be precise. The breadth of the markets deteriorated quite substantially in the last hour or so. Mid-cap and small-cap index are outperforming. Bang Nifty, though, is trading with a cut of three-tenths of percent. The stock of the day is Infosys that's up about a percent and a half, but Sun Pharma is turning out to be a top gainer. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Dealing Room. Thanks for watching.